Hi, we're live. We did it. Okay. Good morning, everybody. We're talking. Well, I have a special guest with me today, of course, and we're talking about. Uh, we're continuing our conversation about choosing peace for yourself, choosing ease for yourself, and we're talking with our special guest, Alicia Bernice, who I'll uh, have introduced herself in just a second. Good morning, Alicia. Good morning. All right. <laughs> All right, so if you're new here, my name is Stephanie Perry. I'm a year-round house sitter. I'm the creator of House Sitter School, and I help black women take a sabbatical or move abroad or become a digital nomad on a budget. Uh, if that sounds good, subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications so that you'll be notified when I post a new video or when I go live with my special guest. Welcome. All right, so I picked, um, I'm in Curacao. I'm in the Caribbean for the winter. Is that something I do now? I am outdoors because I forgot that I don't know I messed up my schedule today, so I had to be outdoors. And as soon as we started setting up to go live, it got super windy. So I apologize for the background noise, but it'll be okay. Once we get the conversation going, you won't care about the background. Okay. All right. So what we're talking today is we're talking about, um, we're talking with Alicia Renice, and we're talking about her path to rejecting the American dream. Her path to living full-time in an RV for a while. She used to be a full-time RVer with her husband. Her path to making music and creating art and uh, living a life of joy and peace and experimentation and trying new things and playing and having fun. Her YouTube channel is a wonderful channel to subscribe to. So this is what we're talking about today. Good morning, Alicia. Good morning. Thanks for having me. I'm glad you're here. You. Introduce yourself. Give yourself a better introduction than I could. <laughs> oh, you're, <laughs> you're fine. Um, I'm Alicia Renice. I consider myself a multi-passionate artist, meaning um, I do more than one thing, like one more than one medium. And so my passions are um, singing, songwriting, photography, and writing. And um, yeah, so with everything I do, like the goal of what I create is to make people feel seen, heard, loved, and valued. Um, and yeah. And so I also create content on my YouTube channel. I'm a podcaster as well, um, inspiring Black women creatives to go out there and like fulfill their dreams. And what else? I am a wife. I am a daughter. I'm a friend. Yeah, <laughs> that's me. All right. We're glad to talk about this today. So um, being a multi-passionate person can sometimes be um, a lonely place because people tell you to dig into one thing, including me, right? I've told people plenty of times, pick something, pick something and do it, right? So people tell you to dig into one thing, but that's not always a comfortable spot for people and it's not always the right choice for people. So, uh, but I think what I think I know about you is that you started with one form of art and then mm -hmm. spread out. Can yeah. You tell, can you tell us how how you went from doing a thing to embracing being a multi passionate creator? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, yes. So music has always been a part of my life. My mother is a singer. My aunt is a singer. My grandmother is a singer. <laughs> so, um, so I would always go to them, go with them to to uh, productions that they would be a part of. They would be singing, and even in church, like I would be just like admiring them singing. So, and I would be singing like you know in my little in my little uh, what do you call it? Pew, <laughs> just singing along. Um, but, uh, you know, as far as like creating music, I didn't really start that until later because I didn't think that I could um, because I thought that you had to be signed by a label to be able to produce music. So so I was like, ah, OK, well, you know, that's not happening. Um, or I tried to. I wrote letters when I was little to, you know, these record labels like, hey, hear my voice. And of course, nothing, <laughs> nothing came back. Yeah. But um, starting out, like writing was my thing. Um, I journaled everything. Like I, I kept a diary, I wrote stories, I should have been learning. So writing was always my my first uh, medium. And so it wasn't until later that I started actually writing a song. Oh, okay, I can do some melodies. Um, you know how like the Casio computer has the melodies already in it. <laughs> so, so the piano, I would just play along, and I I didn't know the words to the songs that that was in the that was in the uh, chess, but I would just make my own lyrics up. And so you know from there. <laughs> From there, I started writing my own song. Um, then later on, maybe in 2012, maybe, my mother brought me a camera. Uh, like, I would always take pictures, you know, those little blind and throwaway cameras. Uh -huh. um, I would always take pictures. And so my mother finally, she bought me a camera. And so I was like, oh my God, this is amazing, where you can change the lenses. And I was able to experiment and play. And yeah, that's how I got to all three of those. So, yeah. 
do you feel like you are, um, <laughs> this is it. Do you feel like you're a weirdo? Do you feel like you're a person who gets to, and, and because I, I also, fear, so I tell people you're not a weirdo, but really you are a weirdo when you do things yeah. against the grain. I think that's an okay label. Are you okay with that? It's okay. Okay. I, I, I would consider myself also a weirdo in a different way. So do you, yeah, <laughs> team weirdos. <laughs> Absolutely. Do you, do you feel, have you always felt um, okay with that? No. Um, I think, you know, when you're a child, so, so, my, so my father was in the Navy. Huh. And so when I was growing up, uh, you, you know, I was kind of by myself for, for a lot of things. Like I didn't really have a lot of other kids around me except to go to like, you know, uh, what, do you, what do they call it? I'm sorry. The words aren't coming to me. It's all right. Um, when I used to go to daycare. Okay. Daycare. <laughs> so, um, so even in daycare, I always was the odd one out. Um, I had like one friend, I think his name was Matthew, but other than that, I don't remember anybody else there. Um, I was a weird kid. And so you don't really feel other until people make you feel other. Yeah. Right. So like in my home, I'm safe. I'm happy, whatever. My parents yeah. love me. And then you go to daycare and they're like, Oh, you're strange. And I'm like, really me eating rocks is strange or me, you know, <laughs> dancing around uh, the room is strange. Um, and so, you know, that really hit me heavy in elementary school. Though. Like I was, I was bullied. I was bullied in elementary school, made fun of, like for the way that I looked, I was really tall. I was the tallest person in my class. Men called me masculine, even as a, even as a kid, like they're like, oh, you're like a man. So like, I'm like, oh, like all of these judgments were like thrown on me. And so I think I internalized that and felt like, oh, there's something wrong with me. I need to change. But it wasn't until later that I was like, actually, I'm fine. I'm okay. And I'm still working on getting there. So, so yeah. yes, yes. We're all a work in progress. Yes. Okay. So I was also the tallest kid in my class. I would be the yes. kid who, um, when, when I remember second grade, Mrs. Cardi was, Mrs. Cardi was my teacher. And I remember my mom coming into school the day before, or, you know, when you come in, when you're in elementary school, you go in and meet the teacher and stuff and see the classroom. And my mom was like, uh, Stephanie can't sit in that desk. Right? And I was taller than Mrs. Cardi. Oh, Mrs. Sue wow. Cardi. I was taller than her. Right? So, that yes. Sense, yeah. Uh, but yeah. also, I come from a family where it was perfectly fine to be me. And I felt yeah. fine with it. Right? I felt fine yeah. with maybe standing out in, out in the world, but fitting in in my family. So that's really Absolutely. good. I'm glad to hear that you felt that support. Um, Katrina, my friend Katrina is here. So I just told Katrina, my friend Katrina just left the Caribbean. She came down to visit me. Hey, girl, hey. She just got back home. And I actually gave her advice this week. So I'm glad that she's here because I told her this week, just pick one thing. Just pick, <laughs> pick one yes. thing. So Alicia's here to counterbalance that and say that it's okay to, to spread your wings, to, to yeah. experiment, which is one of the things that I'm really excited to talk about. Absolutely. Yeah. We're, I'm going to take a pause for a second, friends. If it's loud, if this, if the sound is bad and loud, I can try to move to another location. So can someone let me know if it sounds bad and you're hearing all kind of distracting noises? Okay. All right. So, yeah. So also I, I was the tallest person in the entire school, DC. Yeah. Okay. So it's, it's nice to know that there's others out there. How tall are you now, Alicia? Absolutely. I'm five nine. Okay. So I stopped. Me too. <laughs> Stop growing. Me too. Yeah. I wonder if there was ever any concern among my parents that I was going to be like the world's tallest woman because I was a very tall <laughs> Me kid. My kindergarten pictures are hilarious. It's like <laughs> kindergartner, 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 Stephanie, Karen. There were two of us, two girls, Stephanie, oh, wow. Karen, kindergartner, kindergartner. It's really a funny thing. That is funny. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So back, back on top. Back, back on top. Okay. Thank you very much for that. Okay. Thank you, guys. We're going to bear with it because I don't... It, but if it gets terrible, tell me and I'll pick up and move. Yeah, I'm a, I am Oceanside. Do y'all want to see real quick? I promise we're going to get on, sub, on the subject. So this oh, is a little bit of Curacao. You can see, let's see, a little bit. And then there's uh, the water. But that is not the ocean. That is the, actually, that is the ocean. So there's the ocean and then there are like inlets. So I'm not too far from the water. And I'm in a hostel. And it's uh, very inexpensive for Curacao prices. Okay, mm. back on subject. All right, so you said that you're um, originally you thought you wanted to be a traditional type of singer, right? With the yes. record label who gives you uh, permission, with a gatekeeper yes. who says, we now crown you a person who is okay to be a singer. Yes, and yes. at some point, I guess you decide, because you're a singer, 
at some point you decided, I don't need y'all, right? Yeah. I don't need yeah. you gatekeepers. I don't need you permission granters to tell me yeah. that I can do a thing and then I can even make money from a thing. So how did, how did you become, how did this happen? Yeah. So, so when I was younger, Destiny's Child was like, I love them. Like they were like, oh my God, they were who I wanted to be. And, um, you know, I, I, mean, I thought that I had to be signed by a record label to be able to create music. But it wasn't until recently, like the advent of streaming platforms. And so it's like, it's plus and minus, right? Like there, there are pros and cons to it, but it allows you to be more accessible to more people. So if you build your own following, then like people can find you on these places and support you. Um, and, I, and I say it's pluses and minuses because, I mean, just mini rant for streaming services. <laughs> Um, it is not very profitable to be a singer or performer strictly with streaming. Um, with every stream that you stream a song, an artist might get 0 0.004 cents per stream. So every time you listen to a song, they get fractions of a penny. So a lot of artists have to figure out like other ways to make to make money. And so, um, so with creating music, I wasn't I was never able, not until recently anyway. I wasn't able to make a full time living with music. So I had to do those other things. I had to be, you know, a photographer. I had to be a writer um, and also work a job sometimes. So, you know, there's pluses and there's pros and cons, but like with advents of technology like Bandcamp, where you can support a, an artist directly, um, where they're, I think they take like a small percentage, maybe 15%, I think, of the revenue that you get, like when you buy an album from an artist on Bandcamp. So with these things, they're trying to right the wrongs. They're trying to balance, you know, where, Spotify is making millions of dollars and artists are making nothing. <laughs> so Bandcamp is like, hey, you know, we're here so that you can sell your music to your people. It's like, yeah. Wonderful. So I didn't do this ahead of time. Is your Bandcamp link just your name? Uh, yes, it is. Mm. It is alishareneese.bandcamp.com. Okay. I'm going to type that in here now. If someone will take a second and click on it, make sure I got it right. And then if you're watching the replay, hello. <laughs> dot bandcamp dot com alicia venice dot bandcamp dot com okay if someone wouldn't mind clicking on the link and just give us a thumbs up and let us know so this is where you can buy alicia's music all right alicia uh so spotify yes spotify is a platform that on one hand is just, you know capitalism sometimes it looks like it's giving you things and then you're like wait but wait i didn't <laughs> So, right so exactly platforms like spotify yes your music is out there and people can stream it and it's convenient for the listener and right and maybe you get to, maybe you get discovered by others because your music is on spotify but yeah. man it means that people who in the 90s could make money from like i like comparing it to itunes people who could make good yeah. money from itunes now that spotify is the big guy in this play in this field uh these mm -hmm. people are not making that money anymore. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And and again, like your your fate, it's almost like they became the gatekeepers, right? So like while there's technically not gatekeepers, they are the gatekeepers. They are the ones who determine, you know, whether they're gonna put your song in, in um playlists mm -hmm. or who it's gonna be seen by. Like the algorithm, even on Spotify, they want you to upload more music to be heard by more people, then they'll then they'll start to push you out. Uh -huh. And so with that, it's that's not how art works. <laughs> like, you know. It takes time. It takes time, like to experience things, but it also takes time um, to like get it to the place where you can push it out. You know, yeah. so yeah, yeah, it's it's not very unless you're somebody like Rihanna or Beyonce, or you're not really making a living off of Spotify. So, okay. so let's move into. Thank you, friends. So they said the link is working. All right, thank you very much, friends. Alicia has a remix of "Is This Love" uh, that is probably one of my faves it's hard to pick a fave but alicia's is this love is one of my faves of hers <laughs> yeah all right yeah so so moving in so talking about like the the uh process of making money let's talk about the um the do you feel like there is some freedom compared to what would have happened for you if you had been signed what how would how would your musical life have been dif be different, positive or negative, if you had been signed by a traditional label? Yeah, um, there are so many examples of artists who have been taken advantage of. TLC, for example, I think this was like one of the most famous examples. 
Um, TLC, TLC won, I forget what year that was, but they won all these Grammys. They were like the, you know, the number one selling artists or group, you know, at the time. And they were flat broke. They were dead broke. Um, some of them had to live with their families and things like that because we see the glitz and glamour. We see the artists and we think, you know, oh, this is amazing. But really the the record label is making all the money. Yeah. So and 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 so they they give artists advances. And so what that means is it's a loan. Like if, if I have a five hundred dollar advance, they want me to make that money back plus some. So really, it's not really free money. They're not giving you money. <laughs> um, so they're so that some people are signed into contracts where they're making 15 percent of their sales or five percent of their sales. And when you and when you factor in, you know, making music videos, studio time, a dress, you know, the clothes that they rent, the cars that they rent for their music videos, it's really they're not really breaking even. So a lot of artists go bankrupt, not because of, you know, not being able to handle their money, but because of bad deals and contracts. And so that's why you have artists who put out, you know, 10 albums in a year. And it could be, you know, trash or whatever, what they would think trash because they're trying to break that contract. They're, they're trying to get out of that contract. Um, and so I'm grateful that I was never signed because thinking back to even who I was 10 years ago, no, like I would be, I'd be in so much debt. I'd probably, um, and, I, and I think about the, I also think about the mental, yes, uh, the mental health issues too. Yeah. I'm, I'm someone who struggles with depression and I just know that if, if I were to be as famous or if I was trying to be like someone else to be validated, it would not do well for my mental health. So I'm, I'm glad that I can create the music that I want to create in my own time without people telling me what I can and cannot do, how, how I have to look. I can cut my hair if I want to. I don't have to wear these, you know, these extravagant, you know, to each his own. But like for me, I want to be my own person. And I feel like I would lose, um, I would have to lose myself in that process and that I wouldn't be happy, you know? So it's just, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and being on your own means you get to experiment with the types of music that you make out, that you make. Absolutely. So what are you making now? Tell us about what you're making now. OK, so I'm excited. So I last summer, last summer, I started making songs on my loop station. And so what a loop station does is it loops like it, it keeps looping uh, different you know, patterns that you want to record, different beats, that kind of thing. So you'll see people like competing with this thing, like making beatboxes and like beats. <laughs> Um, I'm not really that good yet, but um, with, with the loop machine, I've been um, singing affirmations. And so it started because I needed to hear that for myself. Like I needed to hear, it's okay to rest, right? Like you're not lazy, you're tired, you know, or um, it's okay to go slow. It's okay to change your mind. It's okay to not be okay. And, you know, I, while I love, I love affirmations. I love, um, I love encouraging music, but I think, I think that sometimes, we need music that just allows us to be in that moment, like to be who we are, right? So I'm not okay, and that's okay. You know what I mean? Like, and there's no, you know, happy ending, so to speak. But the happy ending could just be acceptance of where I am right now. Who I am. So I started making music, and you know, sharing it, and people started resonating with it. And I'm like, oh, okay. So what I needed to hear is not just for me. Yes. Like other people need to hear that same thing. And so this project I'm working on now is I'm making an album. It's it's gonna be again, because I'm, again, multi-passionate, multiple parts, but uh, for Black women, like just specifically for Black women. So encouragement, um, I want to I want to have women share their own stories of like healing, that kind of thing, um, of their arts. Um, I'm, again, pictures, of the project, black women. and the whole point of the project was for women to define themselves for themselves. Like the internet is so loud with people telling Black women who to be, how to be, how to show up, and like what, what black woman is acceptable and which one is not. And so um, I believe that all black women are acceptable and all black women are amazing, um, no matter how they show up, no matter their background, no matter their degree, you know, their class, so to speak. Like, and so I wanted women to show up and define themselves for themselves. Yes. So I took pictures, I allowed them to, you know, insert, it was like, I am the blank black woman. And so they would pick a word. For so I am I had fearless, I had, um, fed up, <laughs> shout out to my cousin, um, you know, just tired, like these kind of things. And it was allowing women to be honest and pe to be authentic. And I was taking their pictures, how beautiful they are. You don't have to grow up with them down, you know how you really are. And that's enough. Um, so that's the theme of the whole project. It's just kind of adding more depth to that photo project. So adding music and affirmations with that, or, you know, love letters. Um, yeah. And so that's, that's the project I'm working on. 
So what it sounds is like the, a lot. <laughs> it sounds awesome. So what is the platform that you will release this on if it's photo and music? Okay, so I have a website. It's leashtrainings.com. Okay. Um, I'll be releasing it on the blog. My hope is to, when I have some energy and some funding, um, to be able to make magazines, like like maybe co- like quarterly zines, like not full out you know, spreads, but just like little pamphlets where Black women can share their stories, their advice, that kind of thing, and I can share their photos. Um, so that's, that's the idea. It's still a work in progress how I'm going to share it, but also on Instagram. So um, Instagram, even though they're prioritizing video, I still want to share uh, photos of, of beautiful Black women. So, okay. yeah. Wonderful. Okay. I'm going to move. And so we're going to move. It, it, I'm going to have to move. But the thing is, y'all, I don't know how to mute this mic. I'm not kidding. I don't know how to mute without muting both of us. I'm using Ecamm Live, and I don't know how to mute without muting both of us. So I'm just going to move. And then um, we'll keep moving. We'll keep talking. I'm going to leave my bag here. It'll be okay. All right. So let's go to a quieter, find a quieter location. All right. So you said that you found out that once you started making uh, the affirmation songs in particular, you found that you were making them for you and you found out that, oh, this is for other people too. Other people need this as well. That's what happens when you start sharing your art. We shouldn't always feel like we need to practice in progress and practice in private. I love watching you practice in public. This is one of my, some, one of the, you are teaching me this. You are teaching us this on your YouTube channel. How to practice in public. Sometimes Alicia will just turn on her loop station and go, right? I got, yeah. Let's make some loops. Let's, let's see what happens. Let's see. I don't know what's going to happen to you, right? Absolutely. Yes. That is the, the joy and the pleasure of someone who is able to see, um, with to, to experiment and play without... I promise y'all I'm getting settled. Experiment and play without (laughs) this is okay. Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, this is is how it's going. This is how it is. Okay. Uh, But yeah, so somebody who gets the freedom to experiment and play and see what happens. And sometimes your experiment takes off. Sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. It becomes something awesome because you're okay with putting it out there. You talked about, yes. I am the fearless black woman. Do you feel fearless when it's time no. to go? Okay. Um, fear, uh, I have I have a theory about, I, oh, well, fear, I feel like it's well-wishing. I've always said this, fear is, fear wants to protect us. It wants to keep us safe. Yeah. And I feel like it's necessary. Like we need to be afraid of getting hit by a car. <laughs> we need to be afraid of <laughs> burning ourselves. Um, but I, I think that sometimes it protecting ourselves, we have to teach it. Like, I'm okay. I'm safe. Like, I'm, I'm scared right now. You know what I mean? And I'm funneling, <laughs> I'm funneling like this, this into energy. Right. But um, I think that we try to wait until we're fearless to do something. And that's never going to happen. You're never going to do it if you wait till you're fearless. Right. So I, I, but I, but I also feel like you become less fearful um, when you start doing it. Like, so you know, not that I, and I'm not a psychologist by any means, but I know that some people do like exposure therapy Uh um, for people. Sometimes the best way to get over the fear is really to work through it. Like you're not really getting over the fear. Like you're just like, you're just getting experience. And so that experience is telling you like, oh, okay, it was fine. I'll be fine. You know, (laughs) and and I'll be fine for the next thing too. Um, And so much to that, to the experimenting, I didn't start off, you know, wanting to share my process. Like I, I'm a recovering perfectionist. Are you? Um, I, I, you know, I would wait until it's perfect. And when I had the perfect name or the perfect, you know, person, like the perfect setup, all these things. And I was just getting nothing done. And I felt the weight of not doing anything, you know, like the, like you feel suffocated. And uh, I was just like, you know what, let me just go live and do it to hold myself accountable, but um, to work through that fear because I was afraid. The first the first live I did, so I do lives on Mondays um, when I'm feeling feeling uh, icy, and I make loops <laughs> on the fly. And um, the first time I did it, I was a mess. I was I was blocked. I was shaking. I was sweating. Um, and but at the end of the show, I was like, I didn't die. It's yeah. okay. I didn't die. <laughs> and and also, um, I felt like I, because I had nothing really to lose. Like I wasn't. I wasn't monetized. I didn't have a lot of people following me. It was just like, whatever. Like, I'm just, I'm just playing around. And uh, I found that that brought me a lot of joy. And then people started coming. We started having conversations. We started making loops about what we would converse about. Um, and so, yeah, so it was, it was a lot of fun. But practicing in public helps with uh, your inner critic. Like, you suck. This doesn't work. This is stupid. This is a silly idea. 
but it's also um, helpful for becoming less fearful. Yes. But I don't think the fear ever goes anywhere. No, <laughs> it's still there. I, I agree with that. I agree with that. I think one of my best traits is that I'll do things even if I'm afraid. Not everything, right? Not everything that I'm afraid to do. But if I can lay out a case for myself to do it, <laughs> I can figure out how to do it even if I'm afraid. Uh, this Absolutely. channel is a testament to that. Your YouTube channel is a testament to that. So I've linked to Alicia's YouTube channel. It's her name, Alicia Renice. I've linked to that here and I'll link to that in the description if you're watching the replay. Thank you. Yeah. So when you um, started making this, so let's, I want to switch gears now because when you get over to Alicia's channel, you'll see, yes, she's got music videos. Yes, she's got affirmations for black women, which you should listen to. Yes, she's got songs. Which, uh, you're not lazy. You're just tired as hell. Lay down. Right? <laughs> <laughs> right. But she's also now talking about the American dream in particular. So I want to switch gears to that because you guys kind of rejected you and your husband kind of rejected the American dream, as I would see it uh, a while ago, a long time ago uh, and moved into an RV, yeah. which I think is is like the biggest middle finger you can give to the capitalist world, even though like you can yeah. do RV life in a capitalist way. But you guys were like, yeah. hey, we're not going to do that. We're not going to. Okay, let's let's talk. I don't want to tell the story. You tell the story. Oh, you're how fine. Did, how, okay. did, how did RV life become a thing for you guys? And when was this? Yeah. So the RV, the dream came to me, I think, in 2017. So I got married in 2016. Um, and at the end of 2016, I, I quit my job because I was getting sick from my job. Like my job was literally making me sick. Okay. And um, so I worked at a hospital. It was it's no longer in existence. Um, but it was in DC and like my back was inflamed. I had IBS. I still have IBS. I'm trying to heal from that. Um, and my depression was really triggered at my job. And so I was able to leave my job after I got married, thank God, and, you know, figure out, okay, what, what do I want to do? Like, what's, what do, what do I want to do? Because I feel like I was working cause I, I had to, right? Like I had bills to pay. I had, you know, a car note, all these other things. And I needed time to, I needed time to be like, what, what, who is Alicia? What does she want? And so, um, cause even I feel like there's this pressure when you get married that you kind of lose yourself in your marriage. Yes. And I didn't want to do that. Like I'm still my own person. I have to know who I am. <laughs> so, and I have to do my own thing. So in 2017, I started looking up videos about like, how can we live more at the time we were living in DC and yeah, it was, it was interesting <laughs> and uh, it was starting to get expensive. And so we decided to, <laughs> you know, we need to shift <laughs> gears. Okay, we got to figure something out because it's not working. <laughs> and um, and not on one salary either because my husband was working. And so I was making money from photography, but I was like, there has to be more than just like me slaving away at weddings. And that's why I don't do weddings anymore for photography because your body is beat. I'm doing weddings, making money, and it's just gone. It's just gone. So I needed, I knew that we needed more margin. I just didn't know how to get more margin, especially not in the DMV area. It's very expensive. So um things started popping up people living living like van life and so there are people who are like living in their vans and just living like living and i was like oh my gosh this is what i want like i, I want to do this but at first my husband was not down okay. i'm gonna be honest my husband was like this is no I th you know <laughs> like he was like i just i just i just married you i you know you're leaving your mom's home you're not gonna be living in no car like this this doesn't make any sense and um i think he wanted safety and so i was like okay all right, let's keep, let's, you know, let's just keep this in the back of our minds. And I wasn't giving up. So then I started look, um, learning about RVs. And the thing is my parents used to RV when I was little. Huh. Um, huh. My parents used to RV when I was little. It was, it was just like, I think I was like four and five maybe, but you know, so you don't, you remember the memories, but you don't really have like experience with doing it. You're just kind of along for the ride. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so in 2018, my husband was like, okay, Let's, you know, let's see what's happening. Cause I was, I, I literally showed him our bills, our money. And I was like, this is not working. Like we can't keep doing this. And, um, and he was like, all right, let's consider it. So we rented an RV, um, an Airbnb RV in South Carolina in Charleston. Okay. And, you know, just to feel like, okay, could we do this? Is this possible? Like, can we live in this space? And we loved it. So we, we searched for, um, we searched for like, a we didn't want to get an RV that was a hundred thousand dollars. Like. That's that, that's the, that defeats the purpose, right? Like you're just going into more debt for for this. So we were going to RV World, and 
RV world had all of these, all of these RVs that were like top of the line and really mm -hmm. fancy, all these pullouts. And we're just yeah. like, we don't need all this. It's too much. It's too much. So, um, so we actually put in our Google maps, it was in v Vienna, no Vienna, somewhere in Virginia, Northern Virginia. Uh -huh. And we put in our Google maps, like RV sales. And so we went to this place called, uh, cruise America. And so from Cruise America, you can rent RVs. Yes. And so we went there and they had RVs for sale. They were used RVs and they were way more in our in our budget than um, than the 100,000 ones. I think the one we got was like 30,000 and it had a lot of miles on it. Um, but we were like, it's nice. It's kind of doesn't have any pullouts, no fancy anything. It's just like, this is how it is. So, you know, we thought about it. You know, we prayed about it. We talked it over. We looked at our, our stuff and we we're just like, OK, let's just let's do it. And um, we bought the RV. And then we financed the RV, I should say. We financed the RV and we um, we started, you know, building it out, putting solar panels on it, like because we wanted to make sure that we had everything we needed. We didn't want to have to go to camping sites and pay more money <laughs> um, just to live. So because that can be really expensive. Um, and we took off in 2019. Yeah. Yeah. That's when we left. <laughs> All right. So yeah. let's go. So you covered a lot of ground in this. Uh, we're going to cover a couple of things. I see you, Angela. Sure. We're going to cover, we're going to go back and uh, I'm going to put our thing on the screen. We're going to go back and talk about this process of convincing your husband. I don't know how to do that. But first, <laughs> let's talk about the pressure that you guys must have felt, right? Being a newly mm -hmm. married couple in the DMV, in, uh, in right outside of DC in Maryland, and having the stress of black excellence, like the black excellence uh, pressure, right? Pressure, yeah. now, right? When you're one person, you're expected to do well. When you're two people, you're expected to ball out, right? Yes. Vis <laughs> visibly, visibly ball out. We need to see you guys. We need to see your houses getting bigger. We need to see your cars getting bigger. We need to see all, you joining these, taking these lavish vacations and joining these expensive uh, clubs and going to these mm -hmm. lavish events. So... Was there, did you not have that pressure when you guys got married to join Team Black Excellence? Or, <laughs> right, I'm serious, I'm so serious about this. No, it's real. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's real. Especially like in the DMV area, like yes. you're saying, that area is Black Excellence everywhere. Yes. Like, like you said, like the, the clubs, the Black professional brunches, like it's, it's everywhere. The, the thing is, I, th I think for me, I never felt like I fit in. So when I went to college, my degree is in American Sign Language. It's in deaf studies. Yes. And so I was going to be an interpreter. I mean, that's a whole other thing, though. They have interpreter, like, Black Excellence brunches, too. too okay. Prepared. Um, but, uh, yeah, I just, it took me, it, so it took me nine years to get my degree. So I already felt like I wasn't Black Excellence, right? Like, by the time I got my undergraduate degree, people had doctorates. And, like, you know, they were, like, starting these businesses and, like, flourishing in my mind. Um, and so I was comparing myself to them um, a lot. And, and if I can also talk about growing up in PG County, right? So PG County specifically is very black. Yeah. Like now it's very black. Um, and so I was able to see every kind of black person, the black professional, the black teacher, um, the black business owner, like all these other things. So PG County really helped shape my mind around like what blackness can be, right? And so it could be more than one thing. Um, and so... I was grateful for that experience, but at the same time, you still feel the pressure of, you still feel the pressure of, uh, it's still low-key hustle culture. Like, it's yeah. like, oh yeah, not you know, low-key, yeah. It's, it's high-key, yes, it's high-key uh -huh. um, hustle culture. It's like, if you want to start a business, you need to, you know, like, own all these businesses, and you need to, you know, buy buy this whole area, this whole lot, and, you know, I've seen a lot of Black businesses, businesses open and close. But I feel like even in the education system, so I was in the TAG program, and this this is important to say in my mind, because I think in that moment, I was introduced to being a better Black, right? Like this idea of, so TAG is talented and gifted. Or okay. in some places, they're like gifted and talented. Yeah. Um, And so I was in, in first grade, I was a problem child because I was bored. I was bored in my class, like my mother, you know, she basically taught me everything that we were learning in the class. And so I was yeah. like, I don't have anything to do. Yeah. So we, so um, they tested me and they put me in a gifted and the talented and gifted program in PG County. Okay. And so that means that they are like really focused on you, like learning at a higher level. And I'm using these terms loosely because yeah. I realize now they're classist and um, everybody should be afforded the same opportunities. Right. Um, but 
but that idea of black excellence was still instilled at that point. Like, oh, you guys aren't like them downstairs, right? Like yes. you're special. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. And I think looking back, I'm just like, like that's problematic. Um, but anyway, so this idea of like ex excelling was in my mind, even in second grade, in second grade on, like you have to do amazing. You have to be amazing. Um, and so, and so yeah, shout out to us tag kick, yeah. <laughs> but it's all trauma. Right. <laughs> so, so then when I went to, when I went to college, um, when I was in high school, I was doing everything. I was making 4.12s on my, on my, you know, uh, credit card, on my, uh, <laughs> report card, report card. Uh -huh. 4.12s. I was playing sports. I was all around. Like I had a job. Um, I was in choir and newspaper and I was doing all these things, like trying to be accepted by college. Like I need a scholarship. Okay. We're poor. We need help. <laughs> like I need a scholarship and like, I didn't get it. I didn't get it. And I, and I feel like that was the first moment that I was like, does this really add up to anything? Yeah. Right. Is this, so that was the first thing. Then in college, the professors, I just felt so, I just felt like I wasn't supposed to be there. Like I was questioning like my worth and my value, but also like, this isn't for me. Like I'm not, I don't like being graded. I don't like being graded. I don't like competing with other people. I don't like, you know, someone telling me when and where I have to be and like what I have to do, like these things that come along with college culture. And so while I was in college, my mental health was suffering. And um, that's why it took me, it took me nine years to get it because I was struggling with depression. I didn't have the words for it at the time. Um, but when you're nine years behind everybody else, like you start to feel like, oh, you aren't black excellence. You are not, you're struggling, right? And um, I think, you know, by the time me and my husband met, you know, I had, I knew that I was different. I knew that I was other, but I was still trying to put, push, push myself into this box of what black excellence looked like. Okay. So, so I know that's like a lot of- <laughs> That's, no, but it all loops yeah. back to the weirdo thing, right? So yeah. if you already feel, even, even though you did try, <laughs> you yeah, did get you did try to get on the black excellence train. You did, right? But right. being being already already knowing that, hey, I'm a weirdo means yeah. that maybe it's easier for you to jump off the train, right? It's yeah. easier for you yeah. to be like, this train is not taking me where yeah. I want it to take me. It's like it's like the building's on fire and you're like, the building's on fire and everybody around you is like, it's fine. And it's like, no, this <laughs> like this is not okay. The again, the first semester I was in college, um, people were like, You have to stay up all night to write papers. I did that one night, I said never again. Cause I got sick. Like my body was like, girl, <laughs> you're doing too much. So so yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think that um it's hard for people who are raised in the environments that you and I were raised in to then turn around and say, uh I don't, I reject it. It's really hard for some, some women. And so it's nice to see other women who are like, yeah, yeah, I figured out it wasn't for me and no turning back. Right. Is this something yeah. that it was easy for you to turn away from easy for you to mm -hmm. be like hustle culture, uh, uh, trying to delineate, trying to establish myself as better than right. The better black phenomenon is not for me. This is not the life I want to live. It's not the place, the world I want to live in. It's not the way that I think black women should be. It's not what I think is for black women. It was that yeah. something, was it, was that an easy turnaround? No. Yeah. Um, and I think it's hard because, so my mother is a single mother. Um, she, like my, my father left when I was officially, I think like around like 12 or 14 or so okay. around that age. Okay. Um, and so my mother was holding it down like uh -huh. by herself. Uh -huh. And so, you know, and you, and you look at that and you're saying, okay, this is the standard, like, this is what it is. And I, and I even had a conversation with my mother about, you know, even learning about code switching. Right. Yeah. I, I, I didn't know what that was, but I knew what it was. Right. I knew that my mom had a professional voice when she answered the phone at work, <laughs> you know, when she answered the phone at the home and when she was around her friends and her family, like she lit up, like she was able to be all of herself. Like yeah. she could, you know, speak in AAVE if she wanted to, when no one's judging her. But I feel like, um, I feel like I seeing my mom work so hard. I was like, I have to work that hard and like, I have to work hard enough so that she doesn't have to work hard anymore either. Oh, right? So okay. like, like, like this pressure, you know what I mean? And, and yeah. not that she, not that she necessarily put that pressure on me, right? but I still felt like it was my, my duty. Like my mom deserves everything. You know okay. what I'm saying? Like, okay. and so, um, so yeah. So I think that when you're growing up and you're seeing someone struggle, you're seeing someone work so hard, um, you normalize that. You normalize that in a way, like you're saying, okay, this is this is how it is for Black women, and a lot of Black women in my life, in my family, they're such hard workers, and like they're single parents, and they're holding it down, and so you're like, okay, so this is this is normal. 
Um, and it wasn't until, you know, that I actually questioned those things, right? So my mother, my mother's, my mother's amazing, um, but she she started becoming ill because she was working so hard and um, like with chronic, chronic disease. And I'm just like, okay, there's, some, there's something to this. There's something like to the stress. Um, I look at, you know, my other family members who are like holding it down, but like they're, they're not real in my mind, like they're not flourishing like they really can. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because right. of constraints that are put on them. Right. And so, uh, you know, even with my mom, mother and I, like we've had conversations where we challenge each other on certain ideas, even like, even like this black excellence. I know and a while ago, like the con the conversation about bonnets came up and about like how embarrassing that is for women and and all this other stuff. And I'm like, well, why? Why is that yeah. embarrassing? <laughs> right. Like if, if a girl wants to go, you know, get milk from the store and, you know, people feel different ways about it. I don't care. Like I'm not, I'm not judging her. I'm not saying, Hey, you're, you're not representing us well, but why, why is it that I feel like it's an indictment on me right. if someone shows up <laughs> free for themselves? Like that's what we should be questioning. Why do I care? I, right. Like I don't. And also understanding that respectability politics does not get us anywhere. It doesn't save us um, or be trying to be respectable. And so, um, so yeah, so I think it took, it took reading, it took questioning, it took I'm um, just being honest with myself. I just wasn't happy. I just, I just was not happy. Even with the degree, with the, you know, you know, the marriage, with the job, with the, you know, the money, I just was not happy. And I really had to question why am I not happy? Mm -hmm. Like, it's not, these things don't bring happiness. And it's just like, because, you know, yeah, for a lot of reasons, I wasn't happy, but also because I wasn't able to be all of myself within this idea of black excellence. Yes. So TL says we need to rebrand black excellence. I, I, I hate the term. I hate it. I hate, I hate everything else. <laughs> I hate it because it's always been designed to leave a certain type of person behind. Yep. It's always been designed to, for some, some to rise to the top, forget everybody else. They don't qualify. I hate it, mm -hmm. right? It's very similar. It's a, it's a different take on the American dream, right? Exactly. But, you, but it's only for a certain person. And I don't like that. I don't like that at all. So TL thinks we can rebrand it. Black joy can become the new black excellence. I want to wipe okay. the I want to wipe the phrase off of the earth. The yeah. Face of the earth. yeah, yeah. <laughs> because and even even when I, go ahead. go no you go sorry oh, no no I was I was gonna say I did a live about that like black excellence is a scam yes and it scams people out of work out of out of labor trying to achieve this thing that is never attainable like there's <laughs> always gonna be more you know what I mean so. And so I got some pushback, which is understandable, but like people were saying, you know, don't, you know, don't talk down on people who are, you know, achieving great things. I'm not, but like, why can't, why can't they be celebrated and the janitor be celebrated? Why can't they be celebrated and the stay at home mom be celebrated? Like, I'm not understanding why there is this hierarchy. Like, and again, it's, it's all, at the end of the day, it all boils down to, and I'm saying white supremacy, it all comes down to the same thing. Like this, this idea that like only a few, like you said, only a few can make it, only a few are good enough. And so I don't like that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want that either. Yes. Okay. So we love black joy. Okay. So we, <laughs> we're embracing black joy over here. Let's like see. I'm having a little computer problem. I think, are y'all still with me? Mm -hmm. Let's see. Okay. All right. Yeah. We're embla embracing black joy over here. Yeah. I don't like it and I want to tear it down. I know that people, you know, when you see someone doing well, there's a, like that instinctual, oh yes, black excellence, but no, we're going to get rid of it. We're going to get rid of it because a lot of the people who you're celebrating are exhausted. They are on their last, last leg. They are on their way to the hospital, right? You yeah. will be at their home going service very soon talking about, but she was yeah. black excellence though. No, indeed. Yeah. Let her have some peace and some rest and some joy. Yeah. We don't, I don't, I don't want to live in a, in a world where black women distinguish who is worthy and who is not worthy of respect, of value, of being just treated like a human being. I want to keep, I want to keep AAVE alive. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Because like you said, like it, it determines who, who gets protection and who doesn't, right? Yes. Like who, who gets funding, who doesn't, who, who, you know, if, you know, and, and sadly, when we're living in D.C., we're living in Southeast D.C. And so not sadly that we're living in Southeast D.C. What's sad is how Southeast D.C. is looked at. Right. It's, it's like the it's on the east side of the river. Like everything on the east side is, you know, like, oh, it's it's not as good. And so in my mind, it's like 
um, when I look at the women there, like even how they how they show up, they're more free than you are. Yeah. Like, they're them walking to the store in their bonnet, they are free. They're not thinking about what you think of them. No. But we're so like, oh no, I can't care. Like this person's gonna think this about me. And homegirl's living her best life. You know Jesus. what I'm saying? So it's like, so we're judging these people that that are seemingly, you know, using air quotes less than, which I don't agree with. But they're actually they're actually joyful. They're actually at peace. It's like the people, like you said, the black excellence people. A lot of them don't have joy. But like it's not it's not joyful, you know. So anyway. always striving because there's no there's no enough. There's no enough. Yes. You're exactly. always a life of constant striving is not good for anyone. It's not. So how did how is your mom's health now? Um, right now we're still taking it day by day. We're trying to you know remedy this with health things like the way that we eat, um, you know, because, you know, a lot of diseases they say are hereditary, but really, I mean, and again, I'm not a doctor. Mm -hmm. So um, a lot of people say stuff is hereditary, but really it's about, we eat the same foods that our parents ate, that their parents ate, you know, that kind of, or we, we subject ourselves to the same kind of uh, trauma with work that our parents subjected themselves to. And so like really addressing those things, I feel like it's going to take more, you know, more time. Mm -hmm. um, but ultimately I just want my mom to quit her job. And so yeah. I, I don't, I think she might be watching right now. Mom, I think you should quit your job. Quit that job. <laughs> but, quit that job. Yes. We, quit the job. It's not worth it. All it is not worth it. So like, I just see, I just see my, and my mother's so dedicated. She is so hardworking and they, and they treat her like trash. Yeah. You know, she's been at this job for 30, at this point, 30 plus years. And it's like the things that she's asking for, like permission to take vacation, per, like sweetie, no, like y'all gotta go, you know? So anyway. Uh huh. I feel like that would remedy a lot of the issues. Um, okay. But yeah. <laughs> okay. My mom, Connie Perry, was a hospital chaplain. She uh, asked for an assistant for I don't know how long. How long? Right. She was a chaplain who had care over two hospitals. Asked for an assistant every year with the budget. No, uh, Reverend Perry, we love what you're doing. We don't have enough money to bring in an assistant. Connie Perry retired. The next chaplain yeah. got an assistant. White man. Oh, right? Okay. So we, we, you are the, the things that we're putting up, we're, we're going to get back to RV life, I promise y'all, but the things that we're putting up with <laughs> to keep striving and to keep doing, other people don't have to do that. Other people don't have to live that way. And so I'm down for like, if they can get away with this, I'm getting away with this. If they can get away Absolutely. with doing less, I'm getting away with doing less. And, and then I'm yeah. going to enjoy it and sleep well at night. Yes. yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. All right. So we've gotten some super chats. So Alicia, we'll give Alicia our super chats today. Let's Aww. see. So let's Thank take a you. second and acknowledge the super. I just typed super chat in the wrong. Y'all, <laughs> I promise you, I'm going to get it together. Okay. So Joy Route. Thank you for that. Frankie is Joy Route. Frankie lives in a van. Yes. Yes. And Frankie was in someplace like Oklahoma recently, someplace where the weather was not on her side very recently, but mm -hmm. I hope you've moved on, Frankie, right? Because she's free. <laughs> she's free to roam about the country. And yeah, Katrina, yeah. thank you very much for that super chat. Katrina, back from D.C. Katrina lives in the area that you're talking about. She lives on the okay. east east part of D.C. So, okay. I don't know. Northeast, southeast, I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't even have told all that. But <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, so she knows, she right, so thank you very much for that super chat, Katrina, and Sandra, thank you very much for that super chat, we really appreciate that, so super chat will go to Alicia, uh, so she can take her mom somewhere and convince her, give, give her a good intervention, give her, yes. set, up a good, set up a good quit your job intervention for her mom, all right, yes. okay, so we, let's, okay, so, okay, so the reason that I wanted to talk about black excellence is that I think that saying, hey, I'm going to move into a van, I'm moving to an RV is a thing that sounds good to a lot of the women in this chat, but it's a struggle. Mm -hmm. And that struggle is, but what will other people think? Yeah, right. That struggle sure. mm -hmm. is, but then what is my role then if I'm no longer a person who is striving to achieve, 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 and I am mm -hmm. living in a van and driving around the country and working in my van, what then is this a whole new identity for me? Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So is was it a whole new? Okay, but uh, and then I promise we're going to go back and talk about how you convinced your husband. Okay, so oh, was <laughs> was this the creation of an entire new identity moving into the RV? Yeah, I, I def I definitely think so. If not at the start, definitely towards the end of our journey, right? So at first, you know, even with the idea of like needing so much stuff, right? Like we feel like I'm looking over because I have like this big bookshelf and I I'm going to have to downsize because we're moving back into an R R RV in a couple of months. <laughs> so. <gasps> 
Yes. Yay. So I'm, I'm so excited about that. <laughs> and do you have a guest bedroom? <laughs> <laughs> well, we got to pull down a couch. So, yes. Okay. <laughs> all right. All problem. right. <laughs> but yeah. Um, so, so when we first went in the RV, we had to downsize a lot. And then we had to downsize some more. So one thing about RVs is not necessarily about the space, but really the weight, right? So you can't take everything with you. Oh. Um, so a lot of clothes we had to get rid of equipment. So I'm just looking around this because I'm overwhelmed already. But um, <laughs> we have to get rid of like a lot of things. And so it really helps you determine like what is essential, like what is really important. And I'll tell you, a lot of things I took with me, I got I got to get rid of because I, I didn't even touch it. A lot of things I thought I needed, I did not need. Um, and, you know, I worried about us having enough. And I think I think that comes from like trauma, like always wanting to like make sure that you have enough. Yeah. Um, so you hold on tightly to everything yeah. or you think like, oh, if I give this up and this I'll never get this ever again. Never get it it's back. Like, yeah. 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 And it's like, no, like I really had to deal with that with me. Like, why, why am I like this? Why do I think like this? And, and I'm a Christian. So I believe that God is the source. So like, what am I, what am I tripping about? Like yeah. if I have my life, I have everything I need. You know what I'm saying? So, and I say that in the talk because I'm like, well, what about my notebooks? And I'm like, uh, 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 what do you call it? Like a pin like a stickler for like, oh, it has to look like this. It has to be this way. And I think being on the road, it makes you more flexible. Like it makes you like, okay, like even with our schedules, okay, we want to get in this place by this time. Okay, well, the tire popped. So we're not going to get there at this time. <laughs> so you can be mad about it for a couple of for a couple of days or you could just be like, okay, whatever. I have everything I need here. So there, there's really no no pressure. Um, we got stuck in, in the mud in Colorado. <laughs> and uh, yeah. And so when I tell you we were pissed, like we were upset <laughs> learning how to communicate with one another uh, that's important too like yeah. when you're in your rv with your spouse like there's nowhere to run like you're not going to no other room <laughs> to talk um it's like everything is right there in front of your face and i think i think me and my husband have pretty good communication skills but i think it got even better on the road because if, if i'm annoyed he's gonna see it on my face so i might as well talk about it if if he's upset you know what's he gonna do go to the back and we have like a curtain in the bedroom just like <laughs> <laughs> no, like that's silly. So I'm um, really determining like what's important. I think is important too. Like what's what is this the end of the world? You know, is this really the end of the world? Um, and I feel like with our life back in DC, everything was like so fast paced. Like everything was so, you know, you got to be here by this time. You have to do that. Even in our lives, like you have to get this degree by 22. You got to get married by 25. You have to, you know, like. And when you're on the road, you're free, and it's just like you have to be flexible or else you're going to be miserable. Yeah. Like things happen that you can't control and you just have to be okay with that. You know? So I definitely feel like I'm definitely a different person on this side than when I first started. That's good. Did you, were you, so how much of this did you, because you did some research and you had seen some other RVers out there. So did you expect that this was going to be one of the, one of the outcomes that you were going to uh, find a newer version of yourself or was it like a total shock? Mm -hmm. Um, I think, I think I was prepared for, for some of the stuff because like, again, YouTube is amazing. Yeah. You can live through other people <laughs> and learn. So you don't have to learn on the, on the fly. Um, but I definitely didn't think that it would change so much. Like even us living in the apartment, like, so we had to stop RVing because of COVID and we ran out of money. So that's uh -huh. a whole other, we can talk about that too. But, um, so we ran out of money and COVID hit. And so we were just like, okay, what are we going to do? So because all the parks were closed and we really didn't know what was happening um, in 2020, this was like in March. Um, we decided to move back in with my mother and then we found an apartment, uh, apartment. So even being here, like, it's like, I'm grateful that we have the apartment, but I know that this isn't what I want. Okay. Like it's, you know, like, it's like, I'm, I'm grateful I am, but at the same time, it's like, I want to be out on the road. I want to be, I want to be going, like, I want to be gone. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, it's, it's hard because my community is here, like the people, my friends, my support system, like all that stuff. And I, I thought that I would lose that on the road, but you don't, <laughs> you know, like my friends are like, we can just meet you somewhere or, you know, we could just call you <laughs> or Zoom. Like it's, you know, yeah. Did anybody come and meet you? Not yet. No. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> Not yet. I was like, wait, do people actually do that? Because well, I my mother, my mother came out and visited us. Okay. So she, she wanted to go to, we went to, um, the Hot Air Balloon Festival in Colorado. Ooh. I mean, sorry, Albuquerque. Albuquerque, me. Albuquerque, New Mexico. Yes. yes. 
Yes. And so um, she flew out to Colorado to meet us and we all like took a road trip to Albuquerque. So um, that was awesome. Yeah, that was that was really cool. Good. Good. Because listen, friends in the chat. So some of you will be planning to do something, move abroad, bop around, move into an mm -hmm. RV and your friends will say they'll come and meet you. They're probably not going to do it. I'm sorry. OK, <laughs> so I have been traveling since 2015. Uh, Marcy, my cousin came to meet me once. My mom came to meet me more, at least once. And uh, Katrina just came to the Caribbean, right? Three people in seven years. Okay, so don't get, a, don't get an RV. Don't get a super extra large RV because you think people are going to always be with you. Don't get an extra bedroom just because you think people are always going to be coming to visit. They probably not. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> They're probably not. Get what you need. Yeah. And then when they come, y'all can work out some accommodation, like yeah. my pull-out sofa or so, just sofa, my sofa in Alicia's RV. <laughs> <laughs> so you mentioned the RV parks being closed during COVID. Mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. I think that I know that RVing is like super uh, busy now. Like all of the parks are back open now. So when do you think it'll yeah. be a good time for you guys to get back out on the road? So we're hoping to leave in May. Um, even on our first leg of our trip, we did a lot of boondocking, which means like oh, okay. staying not hooked up on places. So um, so we did a lot of like staying in Walmart parking lots. I know it sounds crazy, but it's amazing. Walmart parking lots, um, Cracker Barrel parking lots. We did, um, what is it called? Uh, the land, like the land bureau, BLM land, BLM, that's redundant, but BLM. It's so it's owned by the government. So in places where they just have land available, you can stay up to 14 days. And so when we were in Colorado, mm -hmm. so we're in Colorado, like not paying or anything. We were there in Durango for 14 days and it was amazing. We just set up camp, stayed in the same place. We went to go dump, you know, the toilet and things like that um, and get more water. But other than that, like we were, we were fine. So we try to we try to uh, save money in that way so that we don't because the truth is RVing has become like when you said RVing is very busy now, it's become very gentrified. Like it's it's and, and, I, and I mean that to say. You know, maybe 10 years ago, what is that movie with the Christmas movie where the brother lives in an RV and he comes to the house? And anyway, so. so oh, National Lake. Anyways, so, yes, yes, uh -huh. yes. So so how people would look at people like that, they're like, oh, you know, they're trailer trash or, you know, they're they're, you know, homeless or these were the people who did not have. And so now they have to live in an RV mm -hmm. where now you have a lot of I'm just gonna say, white people going, yeah. um, buying RVs and, and I'll say white, uh, rich people, wealthy. wealthy people. That's right. Yeah. Wealthy people, uh -huh. um, getting RVs, you know, doing the thing. And while it's, it's good that people are spreading the message, it's also making it hard for other people who, um, it's make, yes, yes. Bureau of land thank management. You. Yes. Thank you. It's making, yes, thank you. It's making it hard for people who, you know, is are doing this, who don't really have a choice. That's right. right. So while we while we highlight people like, you know, yeah, we can we can we R V because of choice, but there are people who literally don't have a choice. We were in a in a rest stop in Florida, and this was towards the end when we were running out of money. And we were staying at a rest stop for like maybe a couple of weeks. And the same families would come there every night. Uh -huh. And so I get emotional, but like they would come there every night and like they would be in their truck, in their car, they would have multiple kids and they would set the kids up. And then like the parents would like sleep in the front seat. And so we really don't think about these people who who don't have homes, you know, of because of choice versus like what's glamorized. And these people get lost in that. These people get lost in, oh my God, you know, van life is so amazing and RV life is so amazing. And there are people who literally don't have a choice, you know? So, so yes, I want, I, I'm also, I'm very careful about, how I talk about it because we are privileged. That's we are right. very privileged in the way that we that we RV. There are people who don't have privilege. And so, so yeah. Yes, yeah. that's an important conversation. So I'm concerned about that too, right? So I'm a person who goes to places with a lower cost of living and I find a place to stay there. What is my contribution to pushing someone out of that neighborhood? Right. And right. how do I counteract that, right? Or mm -hmm. not, you know, what do I do about that? I don't, I don't know the answers. But I do know that it's important to remember that we're not we're not acting in a vacuum when we're right, someplace. Exactly. It's affecting someone else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. OK, mm -hmm. so y'all gonna see me move again because I got to go back to where I was, get my cord <laughs> and plug in. But we're going to keep it going. OK, this is, no this is this. <laughs> you would think this was my first live stream. I don't know. I promise <laughs> okay. you we're going to get it together. I hope y'all are enjoying this conversation and not not being distracted by my distractions. <laughs> So um, 
let's talk about you, you convincing your husband. How does that happen? How do you convince your husband? How does that happen? Um, so, like I said in the beginning, he was not having it. He was just like, no. Uh oh. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Okay. Sorry, right. my computer was like that. Yes, I can hear you now. Okay. Um. So at first he was he was not with it. I think it had to do with like saving money, but also it had to do with like protection and the idea of living in a vehicle. Uh, sounds kind of <laughs> sounds kind of like oh, like using air quotes, like you're homeless, you know, or you're you know you're struggling. And what it really took for me was to lay out was to lay out the benefit, right? So we were and we were in the process of trying to be debt free, and um, and it was there was no margin to be debt free where we were living. Right. <laughs> so so we were like we have to no. So I was like we have to and to have savings, right? Just in case like emergency savings. We had no. I think they said like everybody is like one paycheck away or one emergency away from being bankrupt or from That's being right. poor, and we were very much that. So we were like, okay, we need, something needs to change. We have to do something. The money I'm making for, from photography, like it's nice, but it's not really allowing us to do what we want to do. The money he was working, making from his job went towards our bills and there wasn't much left after that. So um, once I laid out our budget, once I laid out like, okay, we can save this much money and still have margin and make money on the road, then we can, we can fit. And I feel like after I showed him the benefit, like financially, like then he was more um, willing to, willing to try it. Okay. And more willing, like more willing to like, okay, let's, let's look about it. Look, look it up and, you know, consider it. Then he himself looked up videos from other people and especially just being honest, like black people, like it was really important for him to see black people on the road. And I totally understand that. Yeah. <laughs> and so I think once he saw, once he saw all that, he was like, okay, like this is something we can consider. Okay. Um, I, that worked for me. I'm not sure if that, you know, other married women, um, you know, if that would work for you. But I also considered even now, like taking solo trips, you know, like, you know, if you if you want to stay here, like, you know, at first I thought there was something wrong with that. Like, it's like, oh, is it wrong if I if I travel without my husband? Right. Is that bad? And it's right. like, no, like we're still married. I'm just somewhere else. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So not um, I'm just I'm also going to say this. I think even getting married, I struggled with the idea of giving up my life in exchange for a wedding ring. And I and I never wanted to be that person. Like I didn't want to lose my identity, but I also didn't want to lose the dreams that I had for myself. Like just because I'm married now, or if I if and when we have kids in the future, just because I have kids. It's like, no, I still have to make sure that I'm living a life that I enjoy. And yes, that's good for me, but that's also good for the people I'm in relationship with, right? Like I I'm gonna be miserable, a miserable wife if I'm not living my life. And so we've talked about, you know, me taking solo trips by myself and he's down. He's like, okay, like. You know, and when we leave, when we leave here, he'll just, he could just meet me somewhere that I'm at or, you know, like, it's not the end of the world. Good, and, and of yeah. course for him, like, there's, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Sorry. Yeah, good, good. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes we think that there's only one way to do marriage, but being a person who has seen people around the world do things a different way, it's, there are people who are married who live in different countries. She works in a yeah. hospital in the U.S. He lives in the Philippines raising the kids, Right. Like there are different yeah. ways to do marriage and to do, you know, you do your thing. That's another way, another thing about rejecting like the American dream because the American mm -hmm. dream is so singular. But there are different ways to do things. Everybody can navigate within their own relationship a way to find, a way to be uh, your, you and mm -hmm. us, a way to be you and Absolutely. us. Absolutely. And, and, I, and I do feel like what, what is pushed, what I've seen lately especially, is like oh women have to give up everything all of themselves just to be just to be accepted by a man and i'm like that's trash i'm not doing that like <laughs> that's garbage like that's silly who um, would agree to that who would agree to that <laughs> a ring? like no and and then also people like marriage is hard like marriage even even though like yes okay i have i have multiple thoughts coming at the same time but um marriage is work like marriage is not just Oh yay, we're in love and we're so happy and lovey dovey. It's like no, it takes it, you have to be proactive to to be in a healthy marriage, and that takes that takes energy that that takes work. Um, but I also don't want to, in the same vein, say that you should struggle to be loved. I don't believe in struggle love. I don't believe in none of that. Just to be accepted, no, you would you would be healthier by yourself. Like, don't cut your life short being stressed out by somebody just because you don't want to be alone. You know, <laughs> like so. Um, yeah.
just had to put that in there. <laughs> That's right. Okay. Thank you. So Angela, did we give you info on how to convince? Well, Angela's are, she's already moving to Mexico with her husband. So she's done some convincing. So yeah, yeah oh, wow. I think that the RV, so did you take the RV trial run after he was already in on into the idea or was this part of the convincing? No. So I think this was part of the convincing. I think both. I think at that point he was open to it, but he was like, all right, let's see what it's really like to be two people in an RV together, even if it's just for a weekend and see if we can handle it from there. And once we, once we took the trip to South Carolina and we were in the RV, I was like, this is, this is nice. We could do this. And granted the kind of RV that we stayed in was bigger than the one that we actually right. have now. Right. Um, and so that's important too. So if you're thinking about RVing, you need to test out what you want to buy. Like you need, to, if you can rent, uh, you know, like the space, the kind of space that you're thinking about, that's what you should do first because yeah, it was very different. Um, the RV we stayed in in South Carolina was a travel trailer. So it's not attached to like, you, you attach it to the car, to the truck. Uh -huh. The one that we have now is a class C RV. And that means that it comes with the truck already in it, like a little hood on the top. So, um, so we don't have to attach anything. We don't have to leave our RV anywhere. It just comes with us everywhere we go. Good. Um, so yeah. <laughs> Okay, good. Yeah, I, my best advice would be to, uh, to do a trial run. I think yes, that absolutely. It's, it's helpful to men to be able to see themselves there. They, they, yeah. are, they seem to be more afraid of taking risks. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's interesting. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> I, agree. I don't know if it's because they're just afraid of looking bad, right? Mm, if you mess true. up, yeah. you mess up. But if he messes yeah. up, everybody's, right? Everybody's, that's very true. Every, it's, 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 it affects everybody. I think, that's very I, true. I think yeah. that's So that mm -hmm. trial run is probably a great, um, great way to convince him. Yeah, we can do this. It wouldn't be so bad. And what's the worst that could happen? Worst could happen, that we go back to the DMV, we get apartment. another apartment. <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> we yeah. already live in the worst case scenario here. <laughs> Absolutely. Like we, we did a live on our channel um, about like, did we fail RV life? Mm. Because even within like the RV community or the nomadic community, they're, there is even this perceived hierarchy, which is stupid. People who like do like weekend traveling versus people who are full time versus uh, people who like, you know, it's like, are you a real RVer if you if you only do it on the weekends? It's so silly. But but I felt like um, but I felt like I was like, oh, no, did we fail RV life because we have to come back to the DMV area? And it's like, no, I get to determine what RV life looks for me, looks like for me. So eventually we want to have like what I, what we really want to do. This is what I want to do. Um, <laughs> I want to buy land. I want to have, I want to have a farm. That's, that's what I really want to do. But I also want to travel at the same time. And it's like, why can't we do both? You know? And while I don't have the farm right now, I'll travel. So um, I think being able to uh, be flexible with your dream is really important, you know, because dreams change. They change. You grow. You? That's right. Angela has a question. Yeah. Did you have driving while black issues? So what, how was Ooh. like boondocking, right? So boondocking in an, yeah. uh, in a Walmart parking lot seems like not a super scary thing for white people. It can be very scary for black people. Yeah. What was that like for you guys? For sure. Yeah. They're, they're, it was interesting to me because for me, I felt safer in Walmart parking lots than I did in open space in the land. Um, I'm just gonna be honest. In an RV parking lot, I felt like I had more. Um, I don't know. Oh, can you hear me? Yes. I'm yeah. It's we, we, yes, but we can. We're still going. It's okay. <laughs> oh. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. I am so sorry. No, it's not you. It's me. It's all me. Okay. Um, it's all me. So. Okay. Okay. Um, but yes. Yeah, so we. So in the Walmart parking lot, I felt safer. And in open spaces, I felt like I was more uh, in danger. And, uh, and I think I think it really has to do with like our complicated relationship to nature. I feel like as black folks, um, I feel like it's almost like uh, land or open land or like these open spaces. It can be, it can be like, oh, black people don't do that. That's what I heard a lot, like RVing. Like black people don't do that. Black people don't RV. Black people don't stay in the woods by themselves. and. You know, because there's, there's crazy people out there. And while, yes, there might be crazy people out there, um, it's like this perceived safety that you have around other people that I feel like I felt like, okay, I'm, I'm seen. And not saying that these people would vouch for me or defend me if something were to go wrong, but I felt like, well, at least I'm around people. Um, as far as driving while black, I we, we encountered a lot of like strange looks when we went to RV parks. 
like some RV parks we would set up and there would be people like staring at us and like, uh, okay, like, what are you doing here? You know what I'm saying? Like, why, why are you in our space? Like we felt that very much. Uh, and, um, but while driving itself, like we never got pulled over by anybody. Um, surprisingly, a lot of people helped us out. Like when we had, our, we had like three tires pop. <laughs> um, uh, the last time, <laughs> It was crazy. We had three tires pop, but the last time that the last tire popped, it was a white man who never gave his name, never gave like his information, who called ahead to help us to get places. Um, so while we were out there, it's not, you know, we didn't encounter a lot of uh, blatant, like, like overt, like, uh, like racism, so to speak. But like when we were in the places, we definitely felt like, okay, we're not supposed to be here in their mind. Yeah. Like in their mind, this isn't some place that we're supposed to be. Yeah. Um, it's like, oh no, this is for us. And especially like RVing, there are a lot of like older white people that RV. Mm -hmm. So, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, we're black and we're also younger. And so they're probably like, well, what are you doing here? So it could be some curiosity, but there were definitely some stern looks that we got that were like, uh, like, why are you here? You know, so. Yeah, yeah. that you don't belong here feel, feeling. We felt, felt that in the US. It's a thing that it, yeah. it doesn't happen to me outside of the US, mm -hmm. right? That look mm -hmm. that like, you know, you just don't belong here. Yeah, and then yeah. it's like, hello, yeah. US dollars, welcome, right? Okay. <laughs> so, so maybe RVing in other places would be even less um, uh, like scary and you'd have even mm -hmm. less of the interactions with white people that you don't want. I would really yeah. love to RV around like Scotland or Ireland. Mm -hmm. I don't know the difference between the two countries. So either one is fine with me, right? <laughs> Okay. I have a friend who RV'd around New Zealand and she had a wonderful okay. time. White, she's white though, and she had a wonderful okay. time. So I That's think cool. RVing in abroad could be an even less scary proposition, mm -hmm. I think, than our some Yeah, I would I would assume so too. too. Yeah. 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 So yeah. the but so you you still have the RV or did you sell it and then yes. are, Oh, okay. So, so we still have it. Shout out to my mom. Um, she's letting it, she's letting us in her in her driveway, ah. um, currently. Um, but yeah, if we if we didn't have my mother who would be willing to hold it, like we would put it in um storage. And we thought about selling it. We thought about selling it. Um, especially like we had some financial difficulties recently. Um, even here, like struggling with a COVID with jobs, and you know we were almost like gonna be evicted. And so we were really wrestling with like okay, like. And what's crazy, what's crazy to that is like, we think that these homes, these, these things are more stable and safer. And what, you know, this, this, this hat, this, what happened in 2020 up to here, sorry, I know I've said the name, but like what's happened so far is it's showing us that nothing is really safe. Like not the things that we think are safety or sure things aren't that. And so, you know, we were, we were, we were paying our bills. We were doing the things. And so my husband lost his job. And so we were, we were in jeopardy of losing like everything. Like, and so, you know, it was, it was really eye opening. I think I always knew that, you know, yeah, most Americans are one emergency away from being homeless, yeah. um, you know, or being bankrupt or whatever. And I can, you know, now, like, yeah, <laughs> like we, we lost everything, not because we weren't, you know, stewarding our money correctly or anything like that. It was because, you know, the job dried up because of COVID. And so, um, so thinking about going through those hard times, we, th we thought about selling the RV and using that money, but we wanted, we wanted to use the RV as like a backup plan. So if we do have to be evicted, we can just like move into the RV and go, cause that's what we want to do anyway. Right. Um, but yeah, so. Okay. <laughs> All right. So in May, you expect to get be back in the RV and back to working from the RV. How does that work logistically? Okay. Yes. So my husband is a voiceover artist. So he he's a voiceover actor. So um, he doesn't have to show up to a specific location to do his job. He has like the setup and uh, he's like, he does sound and stuff like that. So he can do it from, from anywhere. Um, I, you know, I make art, I make content at this point, I make uh, music. And so I'm able to do that again, because I have more margin to actually create. And so we are living off of like the money that we saved um, but also making money on the road. Also, if you're if you're interested in RVing, you can also do jobs from the road, like work camping. So there are some people who like go to a certain location and stay there for a season. So maybe the season is like beet farming, for example. You can stay there and help them. You know, uh, what do you, what do you call it? Oh my gosh, harvest beets, <laughs> and you'll be paid for the time that you're there, or like for national parks. So there's a way to make money on the road. It just depends on like what you want to do. So if you're if you have a job that is remote. That's wonderful. As long as you have Wi-Fi, you got to be clear that where you're going has Wi-Fi. As long as you have um, access to, you know, the internet, then you can do you can do anything on the road. So, you know, 
I feel, I feel like it's an oversimplification, but yeah. <laughs> what What is this Wi-Fi situation? But you have, do you, did you have Wi-Fi in the RV? No. So we, so we, at the time, this is before, you know, COVID and everything. We went to like cafes and things like that. We worked from there. We bought some food. We stayed uh, for hours mm -hmm. or, you know, I used the hotspot for my phone. So if I was, you know, doing something online, I could use a hotspot on my phone, you know, for quick up uploads and things like that or quick uh, updates. But a lot of the work that we did didn't necessarily have to have us tied to the internet. Like it was more like we're using the internet to share what we've created okay. or to, okay. you know, you know, so yeah. So yeah. <laughs> not, okay. Yes. Not like you're all day making Zoom calls or right. whatever. Right. You, you can, he can In record. That case, you need to... yeah. No, I'm sorry. No, keep going. No, 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 no. I cut you, I cut you off. But I, I was just gonna say in that case, you need like a real like hotspot for that. That's something totally different. Yeah. And that's what people are doing for Wi-Fi in their RVs, just having a hotspot. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm, there mm -hmm. are companies that don't charge you like a cell phone company does. Or I think that's not. A I have to do more research. Okay. Yeah, okay. I have to I have to do more research on that. Honestly, um, just because that wasn't our that wasn't our okay. like experience. Okay. Um, but I, I do know that there are services that people pay for, and they do pay monthly um, for the internet service. But I also know that there are like, and, I, and of course I'm going to find it after. We talk. But yeah. I'll, I'll put it. it I'll put it in the comment okay. section okay. when I find it because yeah, I've been researching it for myself as well. Okay. Okay. So this every time this word this term comes up, uh, people really want to hear about it. But I've never had anyone to talk about voice over acting. You and your husband have an RV channel. Has he ever made a video about how to get into voice acting? He has. I not on our channel, but he has a channel. He has a channel himself. So oh. I think that he talked about it there and. Mm -hmm. Let me text him because <laughs> I'm like, um, I believe that he talked about it on his channel. It's okay. Um, it's okay. But you yeah, so I mean, what's, what's his YouTube yeah. channel name? Oh God, Hold on. it's either Writing Miles. I think he has two. It's Writing Miles and let me pull it up. M Y L E S. Um, M I L E S. Okay. And or or there's a channel that he has called Dude Make Something. And it's, it's, he's speaking more to men, but like you can still find out information, you know. That's fine. There's men here today, and I speak to women. Hi, hello. Oh, yay. Yes. Okay. So somebody, <laughs> go, somebody go to YouTube.com/slash Writing Miles and tell us if there's a video on voice at voiceover acting. This is something yeah. that we've never. Every time it comes up, everybody's excited, excited, and then I forget to yeah. follow up and find somebody to talk <laughs> about it because it's a thing now. So, here, hi. Oh, here's your husband. Is. I should have okay. known. <laughs> <laughs> this is Alicia's husband. So Thank you, baby. Put, yeah. Okay, so let me put this in here. Alicia's husband, who seems like an awesome dude. YouTube.com yeah. slash and then J A M I E L C A L P I N B O. Okay. Did I do that right? Let's see if I did that right. Okay. So you can get that information because I always thought that you needed to do voiceover work inside this big old booth. But it's a new day. <laughs> yeah. You, know, you yeah. can do it from wherever you are. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. So that's where your information is on voiceover acting. So link. So look at, look, check, yeah. open up the, click on the link to open up his channel so you don't lose it. Yeah. Because when we end this session, the chat goes away for a little while. Okay, so open okay. up the new browser tab now so that you have it and you can find the video. Page is not available. Okay, so I didn't. You might have to. You might have to just search his. Yeah. You might just have to search his name on YouTube because I think at at certain followers you can change your name, but I think. Okay. Jamil. If you, if you if you search it in YouTube, it'll probably pop up. I think. Okay. Yes. And then by the time, Jamil, Cal, Pin, with a dash. And I didn't do that right. C A L dash. Okay. okay. So search for him. You well, I so I don't think you can click on his name, but if you search for his name, you'll find his YouTube channel. Okay. So that'll answer your uh, questions until I can get somebody. Yeah, that'll answer you. No, that'll answer your questions. Period. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> All right. All right. Miles is awesome. Okay. So yeah, he oh. seems like a good dude. You know, and that's yeah. <laughs> hard. Those are hard words for me. To yeah. say. But no, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> Hello, men. Hello, friends. All right. <laughs> so, 
So we've talked about uh, the the process of getting into the RV. We talked about COVID. It's okay to say COVID, I think. I don't know. We'll see. We talked okay. about COVID bringing you back. We talked about you guys mm-hmm. going back out soon. All right. Mm-hmm. So what is your, so, and we've talked about your future projects. So I don't want to close without re- talking again about your project. I think the wind was uh, hampering people's abilities to understand. So even the people who were already here may want to hear again about your future project. Well, sure. Then we have some new ladies as well who have joined us recently. So tell us what you're sure. working on. Okay. So I am working on an album for black women. Um, it's, it's called, um, right now it's called The Love Letter Project. I've been doing that for a while, but the the project came about, the idea for it actually started as a, as a photo project. And this was a few years ago and it was called The Free Black Woman. And so the whole point of the photo project was to uh, spotlight black women, allow them to define themselves for themselves, have them answer questions, that kind of thing. And it kind of, I kind of paused it for a while when we were traveling, but um, yeah, pause it because I didn't really know what it was supposed to be. Then last summer, I started making songs for my loop station, like as affirmations for myself. And then other people were resonating with it. And so I just kept sharing it. I kept making the art. Um, I started going live on Mondays to actually make the music in real time um, where people can come and like, we'll talk about certain topics and based on the topics, we'll make a song. And so like, you know, it's just really fun, really light. And so some people were asking like, okay, well, where is this? I, I'm on Spotify. I don't see it. And I'm like, oh, like I should put this, I should put this together in an album. And so the project is going to be, um, it's going to be releasing as at single, at single, a single at a time. Why can't I say that? A single at a time. Um, and then at the end of each EP, I'm going to co- put it in a collection as like collection one and then collection two, like as I create the art in real time. Um, and so this is, this, this is, this feels good to me to create because I've always wanted to figure out a way like to add in all the things that I do yeah. in one thing. And I feel like this is the way that I'm doing it. And um, I'm just really, I'm really excited about it. I'm really happy. And I'm taking my time with it because um, we were talking earlier about um, like algorithms and uh, machines and how art, art really isn't made for machines. It takes time to create. It takes time to think about it, to write the lyrics, to gain life experience, to be able to create the art that you that you want to create in the world. And um, I'm taking my time with it. So um, at the end of the month, I should release the first single. And um, then I feel like every every few weeks after that, I'll be releasing another single. So, so yeah. Um, I'm excited. What else? I'm excited. Yeah, I think, I think that's that's pretty much it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm excited <laughs> about this. And I'm glad to know that it is like multimedia, right? I'm glad that you you found yeah, a way yeah. to incorporate a couple of the things that you do. That's awesome. And then your yeah, husband yeah. is a your husband also does musical produ- producing, am I right? Or did I make that yeah. up? Yeah. So he is, does. Is he, is he Yeah, no, he does. Mm-hmm. Is he produce, producing on this album? So he always has, he always has like a, a hand to play. So when I'm making music, so most of the stuff is like acapella that I do um, and or like produ- like production that I do. He's really good at like percussion, drums, all that stuff because I, I'm i not there yet. Um, so, but he'll add things. He'll like add like flourishes and stuff. And he'll also, yes, produce like music for me to create with, um, which is a godsend because I, yeah, <laughs> nothing would be produced if I didn't, if I didn't, if I didn't have this. And he's actually the one who showed me that I can make music in my bedroom and share it, you know? So I like, I don't know how I missed that part, but, <laughs> but when we, before we dated, before we dated, we met because he was working on music and my friend recommended me for his project. And so I was like, Oh God, I don't know. Like I have a lot of anxiety. And so, <laughs> so I was in the booth, I was on the floor, like in a ball freaking out. And he's just like, you know, just very patient and kind, like, you okay? Like, it's okay. It's no pressure. Like, take your time. Um, and so he actually got me creating. And so I'm like, okay, like, let me create more things. Let me experiment more, like play more, have more fun. And all the music that I've like produced has literally been with his help. I couldn't have done it without him. Like, so, so shout out to him. <laughs> so. Do you find that music helps with anxiety or is it just, yeah. It's, does it help with you having anxiety and, and, and think, depression? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Um, I, I don't think I realized how much music helped until like I could put words to it. Like it took going to counseling to, to be diagnosed with major depress- depressive disorder and modern anxiety. And, um, and, I, and I always knew that music soothed me. I always mu- knew that music uh, 
calmed me or expressed what I was feeling in a better way than I can. Like even with even with songs in the church, right? Like you'll hear people like wailing or like doing runs and stuff and, you know, making make what it sounds like making noises, but it is music, right? And it's like something that you can't put words to. And um, I always felt like music was able to do that. Like, even if there were no words, you can listen to an instrumental and just be like taken, you know, like just taken with the music. Um, and so music has always been a part of like my self-care plan. Like if I, if I do go into a depressive state, but also creating music. Um, I had a whole project called Matter. And I created this project because I was going through a breakup with my friends and I was, I was done. Like, cause break, I feel like breakups with friends can be even more traumatic than breakups with uh, lovers. Um, just because of that sacred space that they that they held hold for you and um, and that you hold for them. And so uh, when I made Matter, it was really just like a diary of like all the things I was feeling. I felt like I was like I had to be friends with them. I was uh, cutting myself into pieces. I was not able to be all of myself, like dealing with the pain of breaking up, but knowing that, you know, it, I'm going to be better for it. Like, but it still sucks, you know, so a lot of songs that I that I create. Um, and I also have another song called Struggle where I'm just like, I'm venting to God, like, God, life sucks. I don't know what you want me to do. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, and there's no, I always, I always thought that like music had to have like a happy ending. And it's just, I just didn't have a happy ending at that point. And I was able just to be all of myself in a way that I couldn't just be honest with like people I knew, you know? So music has always helped listening to it, creating it, all that stuff. So, yeah. I have linked to Alicia's Bandcamp here in the chat. So you, her music is, she sells her music on Bandcamp and her YouTube channel mm -hmm. also is linked here in the chat, youtube.com slash Alicia Renice. Okay, so I would, mm -hmm. uh, on Bandcamp, if you purchase, will they then get uh, like an alert when something new comes out? They do, they do. When, when you purchase from Bandcamp, um, every time I release something, you'll be the first notified. So, so yay. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, good. So this way you don't have to worry about missing the music that is she's starting to release the end of this month. Okay. So bank Alicia Renee.com slash bandcamp. Yeah. And I mean, can I can I share if if you want like um so there are some songs that I haven't recorded in studio yet. And if you want to um download like the loop versions that, that are done on there while like the other songs are in progress, <laughs> um you can at um Alicia dot C O Oh no, sorry, Alicia Renice.me slash feel good music. So um if you want. <laughs> All right, how did I do? Alicia Renice.me slash feel good music. Yes. Okay, that's music that that's uh, exclusive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Those are yeah. exclusives. All right. Yeah. <laughs> The less says loving yourself sometimes means leaving others behind. You're really right. I don't yeah. want to, I, I know we get, we're going to start wrapping up, but I, it, it is, um, exactly. it, friend breakups are hard and nobody talks yeah, about it. Right? It's, and mm -hmm. so it's, it's, I'm glad that you found, that you found uh, music as a way to, or that music was a way that you were able to heal from that because it's hard and, and you don't have any, mm -hmm. if you don't have any, like without a therapist, I like you just are on your own. There's nobody else who's going to get it, right? <laughs> nobody else is going to get it. Yeah. Yes, yes. absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, Chantel. Chantel appreciates your honesty in nor normalizing emotional and mental health matter. Mm -hmm. I appreciate you. I appreciate, I appreciate that, that from you thank too, you. Alicia. Yeah. Alicia's YouTube channel is oh, Alicia Renee. You. I appreciate that too. You, uh, if you feel like, a weirdo, right? Or if you feel like a person who doesn't have somebody who's going to understand your thing, right? Alicia's yeah. a channel where you can go and be like, oh, I'm not alone with this. Oh, I'm not alone with that either. Oh, I was also the tall child. That makes me happy. <laughs> yeah, it's wonderful. Like my goal is literally, yeah. <laughs> go ahead. No, I was, I was just going to say, like, my goal is literally, like, to be the person I needed when I was younger. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I mean? Like to one to make my younger self proud, but also because I feel like a lot of our our child selves we have it right. You know what I mean? We know who we are, but we we end up making ourselves into other these other versions of what other people want us to be. And so, like, yeah, if if other people that way, like when y'all when you were saying that, like it's like the ultimate like compliment. Like, yeah, like sharing stuff is hard. Sharing stuff is scary, but I feel like it's necessary. And I only share things that I've actually like either am working through or have worked through because, you know, sadly with the internet, people can weaponize, you know, what you, what you say and how you feel, but 
because I've, I've worked through it, it's like, okay, you know, like I'm sharing this like for, for my, for my own self, but also for other people. So yeah. that makes me really happy. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. That's wonderful. Yeah. It's a good, it's a good feeling. It's a great feeling. All right. So, okay. So we, ladies are going over to buy your music. Thank you very much. Just, let's just her late bloomer. All right. Oh, thank you. Thanks. Good. All thank right. You. <laughs> so what did we not, what did, what do you think we didn't cover Alicia? Can I just say something about play, if that's possible? Please, because play. you're sitting on a ball right now. About experimenting. Okay. <laughs> I am. You're bouncing. I see you. So, I, see you. <laughs> I, yes, yes, I am. Um, I, I think that sometimes, not I think, I, I have to, re I keep saying I think, and it's like, I know what I'm saying. Yeah. But, um, you know, anyway, yeah. sometimes we lose ourselves in becoming too adult, right? That's 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 how I felt. Like I felt like I was losing myself in becoming too adult. And adult means that you can't do what you want to do. It means that you can't have fun. It means that you have to earn your rest. It means that you have to, you know, do all these things. But once I started treating myself like a child, it's like that's when I started to come alive. I mean, you, you know what I mean? Like you give you give grace to children, right? You yeah. you um like again, I keep saying like babies just exist. They can't do anything, and we love them anyway, right? <laughs> They're so, dumb. They can't They're do anything. Helpless. Yes, and we love them so much, and we love them. <laughs> and it's like, why can't we take that same love and care with ourselves? You know what I mean? Like, who said that we weren't worthy of that love and care, especially from ourselves? Like, whatever the world does, okay. But like for ourselves, and I, and I feel like once I started allowing myself to play, to not have all the answers figured out to be open to like where I'm going to go. Like even in my creative journey, that's when life started to open up. You know what I mean? Like that's when I started feeling like more at peace, more joyful. Um, and so, yeah, I, I just feel like if we looked at life, like, like an experiment, I like that you said, like, what's the worst that can happen? Like, like you said, usually the worst that can happen is that you end up where yeah. you are right, right now. Right where you are. <laughs> <laughs> right. Like you're not going to die. You know what I'm saying? Like Lord willing, you're not going to die. Like it's just for me, I just, I just feel like because I am a weirdo, I just think that, um, and, and people know that I'm a weirdo. My family calls me sensitive all the time. Like, you know, and they say it lovingly, but like, they know, like Alicia, you know, and, and I, now that I accept myself, it's like, I have, when I give myself permission to play, life becomes like in full color. You know what I mean? So, so yeah, like if, if you don't, if you want to do something and you don't know like how to do it, just experiment. Like just like, like, like you did in school, like the science fair project, I hypothesize it's going to happen. If it don't happen the way it's supposed to, okay, <laughs> you know, moving on. Like, so that's that exactly <laughs> right. And when we, a lot of times when women are saying like, I feel stuck and I need a breakthrough with the advice is do something that you're, you would do if you were seven, what yes. would you do if you were seven? Would it be yeah. paint? Like when I was a kid, I used to do, I used to line up uh, my mom's perfume and makeup things on her dresser and just like mm -hmm. act out little scenes with them. Yes. <laughs> we, I got little scenes, <laughs> talking, right? Maybe not yeah. a direct connection to YouTube, but like there's something to, say, to be said about me liking to talk and te I don't I teach I teach the little perfume bottles some stuff, right? Yes. <laughs> she has a blue yes. makeup puff in a in a blue thing. I love talking to that puff <laughs> and making it act out scenes, <laughs> right? What would you Absolutely. do? Absolutely. That is a way exactly. to find out what you're really into before people mm -hmm. tell you, oh, that's dumb. And before yes. people tell you, but you're not, that's not serious enough. That's not black excellence mm -hmm. enough. Like what would seven-year-old you really want to do today? Try that. Yeah. So what, what does play look like for you? Literally, um, I, I can't, well, okay. I don't paint well in other people's opinions, right? <laughs> so I'm trying to <laughs> change my language around that, right? Like, obviously I'm not, right now, I'm not going to be in any museums or anything like that, but okay. I like painting. It's fun. Like, I like the feel of the paintbrush against the paper. It just feels good, right? Just like tactile, like it just feels good. Um, with playing, even with music, like again, how I talk about going live, I don't know what I'm doing. I, I literally just show up and I'm like, this sounds good, this feels good. Like not having an, an, an outcome, like waiting on the other end. It's more just like being in the in the moment. And much like you were saying, when you're a kid, you're in the moment. Like, you're, like you know, the box is a spaceship, you know, your mom's, closet is like a dungeon, whatever you want it to be. Like, it's just about being in the moment. And I think um, sometimes it's just like listening to myself. Like, like I just want to go on a drive today. I want to take a walk. You know, I want to listen to a good song. Um, I want to, you know, have a concert in the shower. Like there are other things And it. And it, the reason why I like it is, is because it, uh, 
it uh, removes the need to be perfect all the time. It, re it removes the need to like be performative, right? Like we're not doing things just to, again, like you say, be black excellence or to be approved by somebody. It's like, no, I'm just doing this for fun and nobody has to see it or hear about it ever again, you know, but it just feels good. No <laughs> so, pressure. No so, pressure. Yeah. yeah, none. Yeah. None at all. <laughs> Can you answer, I'm going to take myself off the screen for one second, but can you answer this question about okay. gas price prices and how y'all plan to navigate that for the oh, oh. spring and summer? Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. So gas prices, oh, this is not right. gas prices definitely ate away at our budget. Um, I, what we're going to do this time is travel slowly. When we first started RVing, one of the reasons why we ran out of money so fast is because that we were like running, like going, just always going, going. We were moving on to the next thing. Um, so we're planning on saving money by going slow, by staying in one place for like a couple of months, um, you know, by, yeah, just staying in one place for a couple of months. Like, so this, this approach to RVing is going to be a slow one, not one that's like, oh, we have to see everything right now because hopefully this journey will be long. Life is long, and so we don't have to rush to see everything that we want to see right now. Um, but to be fair, gas is gas is something you should consider when RVing. I think our our mileage was like 11 miles per gallon, if I'm not mistaken. And we also tow a car behind us. So so when we when we tow a car behind us, it actually lowers our gas mileage. And Jamal, if you're here, correct me. But I think like it's 11 miles per gallon, and less than that, like eight, if we're towing a car behind us. So yeah, so you really do have to factor in gas, but there are RVs now that are like electric. Granted, they're a lot more expensive, but they're electric. There are some that are hybrid. Um, so yeah, so if you want to pay more money outright, like in the beginning, um, then go with that. But you know, if you're like us and you got to use RV, you know, then take your time <laughs> to save money. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but yeah, with RVing, with you know, living slow, there's no rush. So we take our time. <laughs> okay, good advice. Good advice. Don't do competitive RVing, yeah. right? <laughs> Look, we had four, yeah, yeah. <laughs> four states in two days. Like, chill, relax. Okay, okay. settle down. That's exhausting. <laughs> exhausting. And, and what you will realize is how exhausting that is. Like, it's we were so burnt out, like, at some points because we were moving too fast. We had too many things on the to-do list. And when you're RVing, you can't go as fast as you would in a small car. Like, mm -hmm. you have to go slow. Your our tires burst from going too fast, um, you know, and carrying too much weight, you know, like we're exhausted. It's just, it's, it's not necessary. It's not necessary. And mm -hmm. RV life will show you to take your time. Um, yeah. Oh yeah. So he said that's about right. Yeah. Okay. The MPG is rough. <laughs> going, going slower, slower help. helps you save more gas. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Good. Okay. So I appreciate, <laughs> we had more super chats since the last time we acknowledged them. So let's look at those. I really appreciate you coming in and talking with us, Alicia. We, um, like, I, I keep typing this in the wrong place. So y'all, I, while I'm looking for the super chats, I appreciate y'all's patience. Cause this was, I had, I did make a mess of some things, but I think the conversation was good enough to overcome, to compensate yeah. for, the, for the map. <laughs> I broke out into a sweat. Everything is, everything is happening. I'm feeling a little. You are fine. Uh, okay. But we did, but the conversation <laughs> was wonderful. So thank you. And thank you for the super Yay. chats. Thank you for that super chat, Marie. Thank you, thank you for this super chat, thank Beverly. Thank you, Angela. All right, Angela's going RV, our full time RV this year. Thank you for Taniqua for that. Yay. All right, all right. So I got to end this because I'm I'm sweaty and I got <laughs> I got to eat. All right, and yes. Chris, Chris, <laughs> Alicia, yes. I'm gonna reach out to you and find out how to send you the super chat money. I really got to go. Well, all right, thank you very okay. much. No, no, me. it's all good. Okay, thank you for having me <laughs> thank you all right friends we'll talk again soon thank you very much i'm sorry i gotta go bye <laughs>